The definition of a thug is any person who uses violence or brutality. You wanna be a thug? The definition of mentality. The attitude toward life, toward society, or one's intellectual capacity. We're going to talk about, like I said, now music. Now, now, I tell people, never underestimate the power of music, okay? You know, I, in the 90s, okay, we started seeing, uh, 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 like I said, a new era where a lot of rappers and uh, R&B artists were promoting Fortune 500 products. And what really surprised, you know, the world was when Lee Iacocca, a billionaire Caucasian uh, businessman went to Long Beach, into the hood of Long Beach, and got Snoop Dogg, a validated gang member, pulled him out of the hood and made him spokesperson for Chrysler. You know, people are scratching their head, you know. I'm, I'm sure the stockholders are scratching their head. What, what is this guy doing? You know, this prestigious company getting this thug to be, you know, a spokesperson over this prestigious company. But you don't think there was any research or data behind that? Of course there was, okay? You know, see, there was a guy named Dr. Roy H. Williams. You know, he had wrote a book called Thought Particles and does some research on the power of music. And he was going around to these Fortune 500 companies saying, hey, you need to put this type of music, you know, in your ads. You know, these artists have a, a, a very powerful fan base and, you know, they could be easily influenced by these artists. You know, like I said, we got the Going Dumb movement, you know, E-40. And like I said, Mac Dre, that got a whole, you know, mainstream of you wanting to go dumb and stupid. So, you know, he was teaching this way back in the 90s. But he broke it down like this. He said, you know, we have two parts of our brain. We have our left brain and we got our right brain. So you're listening to me right now with your left brain. Okay, that's the conscious part of your mind. Now what is your right brain doing? Your right brain's picking up all the background sounds. Okay? Your right brain's recording me like a 24-hour audio and video camera. Did you know that your right brain never forgets anything? That you never forget anything? You say, yeah, you always forget things all the time. No, you don't. Your left brain does, your right brain doesn't. That's why when you lose something, a lot of times people say, well, can you relax and, and, and just, you know, sit down and trace back your steps? Why are they telling you to do that? Because when you relax, right, you shut down your left brain so your right brain can kick in. And you say, oh, I know I left that, I left that under the stairs. You see? But as I'm talking right now, you could shut me down, okay? Because, I, I, you know, I'm just talking. Ain't no music playing. You know, you're like, man, this is going on way too long. I think I'm going to shut off this video now. You can shut me down. But you know what they say, scientifically proven, if I put on a beat, when I put on a rhythm, okay, that you like, okay, you might think that you're shutting me down. You're like, you know what? I, I, I like that beat and the rhythm. I'm listening to what Ray has to say, but that beat and that rhythm is tight. But see, as you're listening to the beat and the rhythm, what they're saying is that the words that I will say will bypass your left brain and go into your right brain. Okay, now think about it. You know, a lot of people say, well, I just listen to music, you know, for the beat or just the rhythm. You know, I know a lot of that crazy stuff. I don't listen to any of that. And that's true. A lot of people are listening to it, you know, just for the beat. Your left brain is. But listen here, all those words, you know, I'm a pimp, I'm a gangster, you know, I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a G, I hate the police, all these negative words, you know, like I said, as you listen to it for the beat, they will bypass your left brain and go into your right brain, to your subconscious. You will say, big deal, you know, it's in my subconscious, so what? But did you know, as you sleep, your right brain still works. And what's in your right brain will transfer back to your left brain and you'll begin to believe and understand the messages, not even knowing you're believing and understanding them. So you listen to all this negative music about anger and all of a sudden you wake up mad with the fizz face, just angry at the world. You know, people ask me, why you mad? I don't know why I'm mad. 
Don't ask me that. That's making me matter when you keep asking me that. We'll see, you know, I, I don't think, like I said, they're just angry. All of a sudden, you know, they want to go down to the mall and get a skeleton shirt. Why do you want to get a skeleton shirt? I don't know why I want to get a skeleton shirt. I just want to get a skeleton shirt. You see, subconsciously, they've taken all of these messages in and it reprogrammed their beliefs without them knowing it. And that's the power of music. Music has the power to reprogram it, reprogram your beliefs without you even knowing it. Okay? So, I, like I said, I'm, I'm going to take you now to uh, a little animation I created just to kind of reinforce, you know, uh, this message. Here you got the typical you just grooving to the beat, just grooving to the rhythm, you know, not paying attention to the words, you know, just enjoying the flow. But unknown to him, these messages coming through from the lyrics of just anger and lust and pride and violence and just anarchy and, and greed and drugs and rebellion are entering into him. You know, he's just, like you said, he's just flowing. But they're bypassing his left brain, the conscious part of his mind, into the right brain, his subconscious. And they're going to be just harbored in there. People say, well, big deal. It's, you know, it's in my right brain. So what? It's not doing anything. But during the sleep cycle, what's in our right brain is going to be transferred back to the left brain, to the conscious part of our mind. And when it comes from the subconscious to the conscience, during that process, he's going to start believing and understanding these messages not even knowing he's believing and understanding them. So these are the messages of, of lust and, and crime and just arrogance and anger and pride just being programmed into him. And in the morning, you know, he's waking up. He has an attitude. You know, he's angry. You know, he's ready to unleash on the world. Okay, I hope that reinforced the message. But I got something else. I got a, a, a friend of mine. Okay, that I met years ago that was incarcerated for a double homicide, actually at the Youth Authority, you know, uh, when I was working there, he was there. And, you know, uh, he since then has changed his life. He's a pastor now, got his doctorate degree and everything else. I mean, he has a powerful story called uh, Murder Forgiven that you can see on our YouTube station. But Dr. Levon Davis, I remember we had met up when he had got out. And he was telling me, like I said, he was a youth when he went in for murder at 14 years of age, got out when he was about 24. And, you know, I, I remember him, you know, telling me about this one song that he said really helped to pump him up to commit the murder that he did, the two murders that he did. So we're going to go in quick. I'm going to play the song, a real short clip of the song, and then we're going to go into a short interview with him. But pay close attention to what he's saying. You know, think about this whole, you know, left brain, right brain as he's, you know, talking. Six in the morning, police at my door. Fresh Shadita squeak across the bathroom floor. Out my back window, I my escape. Didn't even get a chance to grab my old school tape. Mad with no music, we happy cause free. And the streets to a player is the place to be. Got a knot in my pocket when at least the grand. Gold on my neck, my pistol's close at hand. I'm a self-made monster of the city streets. Remotely controlled by hard hip hop beats. But just living in the city is a serious task. Didn't know what the cops wanted, didn't have time to ask. Word. Word. A little bit about that song. That song, since you know, I was uh, maybe eleven or twelve, I think, is when I really uh, <laughs> idolized that that song. Uh, it just talked about one eight seven uh, murder, uh, the police, uh, different lyrics in that song. I remember one night laying in my bed and. I was trying to pump myself up to the point where nothing could affect me, nothing uh, would, would damage my mindset uh, towards making money and selling these drugs. And 
I can remember quoting the lyrics uh, of that song uh, in my bed one night and literally asking myself, you know, could I commit murder? Could I shoot somebody? Uh, what would it take to do it? And I remember convincing myself yeah, you can do it. It, it. It's nothing. And I play the song over and over and over again in my head. And it really uh, put me into the mindset to believe that uh, pulling the trigger is nothing. Stabbing a person is nothing. It, it set the tone uh, to let me know that, yeah, this can be done. I literally believe uh, the very words that Ice-T uh, was saying. And it helped me uh, become desensitized to life. So did you hear what he said? He said that he would listen to the music over and over, and he literally started to believe the very words that Ice-T was saying, and it helped him become desensitized to life. See, music is not just music. Music is very spiritual.